Barbadians continue to celebrate the centenary of the birth of the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow. The search is on for the best cook in Barbados. And in sports, West Indies going for a series leveling victory in tonight's final T20 against Ireland. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. And a very good evening to you, I'm Lisa Lord, and in our top story. Barbadians are being encouraged to use the life of the late Prime Minister, the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow, as a shining example of how to be a good Barbadian citizen. The suggestion from Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley, who was the featured speaker as the Errol and Nita Barrow Educational Trust, celebrated the centenary of the birth of the father of independence. Shane Jones has more. Hundreds attended the gala at the Lloyd Erskine Sandyford Center held to celebrate the legacy of the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow. His commitment, passion and belief in education for all was shared with his sister, Dame Ruth Nita Barrow. Now since 1991, the trust has awarded approximately $1.5 million to over 140 students from Barbados and the Caribbean to enable them to pursue a course of study that will further the development of the region. During her address, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley said apart from his political legacy, Barrow had a personal hand in molding her. From 1976 onwards, after Errol Barrow became a non-Prime Minister, he was effectively a living force in my life and was effectively the person who stood as my grandfather in almost every sense. I came home many an afternoon from school and that was who was there in order to guide, to school and to explain many things to me. Ms. Motley dubbed Mr. Barrow a promoter-in-chief of Barbados, but regretted that some Barbadians do not follow that example. We have chosen, more often than not, to use the social media and the technology to share that which offends, that which concerns, that which disturbs us. But I ask us how often do we share it to promote that which represents the excellence of Barbados? that which represents the ease of Barbados. The Prime Minister stressed that the legacy of Barrow reaches much further than just the father of Barbados independence, but also one of Caribbean unity. Errol Barrow delivered himself of the quotation, I am a West Indian, and there is no one who is more West Indian by birth or by inclination or otherwise than I am. I have come to understand that that statement was not just rhetoric, but it was a commitment to the kind of society and to the kind of policies that would build a strong, vibrant West Indian nation. Barbados celebrates Arrow Barrow Day on Tuesday. Shane Jones, CBC News. The Democratic Labour Party kicked off a week of activities in recognition of Mr. Barrow's centennial birthday with a service over at the St. Lucie Parish Church. President of the party, Verla de Pisa, says the contribution of the late leader was fundamental to all that Barbadians are now enjoying, and we have to build on that. She says as Barbados looks to position itself on the world stage, we must look to single out the individual talents of our people. We find ways to promote what is socially just in this country. That we find a ways to give space for creativity, to give space and latitude to those who think different from the rest of us, because all have a valid role to play. In his sermon, Anglican priest and rector of the St. Lucie Parish Church, Reverend Canon Curtis Goodridge, expressed concern about the crime situation. He said Barbadians must put down the gun and take up the word of the Lord. Pointing to last Thursday's brazen shooting just outside the St. Albans Primary School, which left a parent dead, Canon Goodridge spoke to the importance of Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy upon him and to our God, 
for he will abundantly pardon. Seek the Lord. People need the Lord. People in this country of Barbados need the Lord. For anyone who is following the Lord Jesus Christ will not openly and broad daylight and before children kill anyone execution style. Anyone who is following Jesus Christ will not do the evil and the wicked things this country today. The partially decomposed body retrieved from the bottom of a cliff at Consett Bay has been identified. It is that of 35-year-old Jason Hobbs of apartment number 1, number 72, Elizabeth Park in Christchurch. The body was found in an area known as Elbow Bay, My Lady Hole, just before 10 on Friday morning. The police marine unit and the Barbados Coast Guard retrieved the body. Well, calling drug use a major threat to future generations, Minister of Home Affairs Edmund Hinkson says the undeniable link between the drug trade and crime continues to have a negative impact on the fabric of Barbadian society. He was delivering an address to the Congregation of the Garden Church of God this morning. It's part of the National Drug Council's Drug Awareness Month activities, which continue under the theme, Know the Fact, Make the Choice. Even if you don't care about that and you're not sensitive to the fact that school children, teachers, who are just trying to get an education will be affected. Think of the effect this has on your close relatives. According to stats from the Barbados Drug Information Network, alcohol, marijuana and crack cocaine are the main drugs motivating the need for rehabilitative treatment on the island. Minister Hinkson says a massive financial strain drug treatment has on the economy can be eliminated with better public education. It costs 68 times more to rehabilitate one person in residential care per day as opposed to the average cost of prevention education for that one person when that individual has also been involved in a crime, the cost continues to climb. It takes around $32,000 odd dollars per year to house an individual at doors. This is only the cost of the incarceration. This doesn't include, said the cost possibly of medical treatment at Queen Elizabeth Hospital.